Oh man, even when they're rough like this, it's still hard seeing them in a boneyard. So last night, I'm going to sleep and I go through the messages on my phone and uh, my friend Ivan sends me a picture of a 66 car, 67 car in it. And I'm telling everybody where this is now so that the vultures are going to come and beat me to the stuff that I need. But that's okay. So, he sends me this picture. I says, oh God, I got to go check that out. It came in yesterday. So this thing hasn't been touched yet. But I'm just going, like I said, it, it's, it's still... Even when they're rough like this, it's hard to see them in here. So, this is a gold mine for our charger project because there's a lot of stuff on this car, a lot of odds and ends that we need. But let's uh, let's take a tour real quick. So this thing has been sitting around for a long time. Now the sticker, sticker looks like it's, it's an ancient sticker, but according to the uh, according to everything, it came in yesterday. It's listed as a '65 Dodge, but it's a it's definitely a '67. Coronet. So this is the uh, oh, it's Coronet 440. So this is wow, this is like really nice. There's a lot of good stuff here. So, you know, 440 does not mean it's got a 440 engine. 440 is the trim model. So, you have the Coronet, Coronet Deluxe. You have the Coronet 440 and the Coronet 500. And, of course, the RT. So, but the 440 is just a trim level. And it's actually a pretty unusual car in that it's got the painted roof option. So, you see it's got the trim for a vinyl roof, but this was never, this never had a vinyl roof on it. It's just it's the painted roof. Which was the smart thing to do if you wanted a car in two-tone you know you got that vinyl roof after just a few years they were they were a mess but if you wanted the the uh the painted roof you know you got the you got all the extra trim and and doodads that you would get with the vinyl but you don't have the liability of the vinyl so but anyway it's got ooh, look at the look at the stainless around the windows it's in really nice shape Let's see, inside the car here. Uh, I, I got the idea that this thing sat for a long time. <laughs> so, this, it definitely has the, uh, the missing floor option and the uh, weeds growing up through it option. And uh, oh, look at this. Yeah, this has been sitting for a while. This thing has been sitting around since the uh, Peace, love, drugs, and Donny Osmond days. Oh, God. But look how complete this is. All right, those under dash vents, I need those. There's another one on that side. Good, I'm going to come back and grab those. I do need a radio for it. And there's the radio minus the knobs. Wow. That's got a CB radio mount. On the, yeah, definitely. This, this thing's been sitting around since the 70s. Oh, here's the keys are in the ignition. Get a look at the trunk. Now, if I'm smart, I'll come and grab this. Look at the condition of the sheet metal. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little rusty down here. But if I need a graft from this center of this panel this is like perfect so I may just come and cut that out I hate seeing them like this all right so let's find a trunk key wow we got a lot of we got a lot of keys here right up well what do we got here <laughs> nice the disco era trans am toy this has been sitting around forever this toolbox yeah okay this is like a time capsule 
bunch of old wrenches in there. Wow. You know, all in all, the trunk doesn't look too bad. The drop-offs are nice. At least it is on that side. Oh. Had, uh, <laughs> it had the, the optional Mopar fuse box fire. Oh, God. The trunk lid's got a lot of flaky rust on it, but it's a nice shape. And look at these tail lights. I can't use those, but wow, no, they're missing. They're missing the trim that goes around here. There's like a little chrome, plastic chrome piece that goes around the center. But definitely worth digging around some more in here. Yeah, definitely been sitting around for a really long time. Oh, the remote mirror is nice. I already have one on my car. Wouldn't be bad to grab that for a, uh, a spare. Yeah, okay. Filming. Come on, Mopar guy. You should be able to find that. Okay. Ooh. So, what we got here? That's a small block. So, the base engine on this car would be a 273 but it has factory AC, which means that this is a 318. So forget all about those mechanical rocker arms and push rods. This is gonna have just a regular standard LA hydraulic stuff. Uh, it looks pretty unmolested. Wiring harnesses are all nice. You know, I may grab those. That's a that's a one year only 1967 Lease Neville three speed wiper motor. I may grab that. It's the same as the one I have in the car. And so all the AC stuff, all complete and intact. Dryer bottle. You know, I may put factory AC back in that car since it's all here. All right, here's a here's a telltale how long this thing's been sitting that's a spark amplifier so yeah that's more disco era fuel economy stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna say that this car has been parked since since the late 70s maybe very early 80s based on the stuff that's on here Wow, and it's hard to find right out of shroud. I myself do not like shrouds unless they're absolutely necessary. I leave them off of my cars. And I never have an overheating issue. Well, look at the relationship between the radiator and the fan. The shroud on this car is more of a formality than anything else. You get into some of those 70s GM cars where the engine is set back, you know, a good foot and a half from the radiator, the tunnel is important. The shroud. The shroud is really a tunnel. But I'm going to grab that anyway because why I may not use it, I'm sure I'll find someone who does. And that radiator, that's a nice radiator. All original stuff. Let's see what we got down here. It doesn't look too bad. No, I'll grab that if nothing else just for the tanks. Even if the core is shot, the framework and the tanks are good to have. Wow. Very nice. Very nice. And the hood's in nice shape. 
I do need all of the fasteners with this piece of trim. Actually, I'll just take this whole piece of trim. This is nicer than the one I have on my car. What a shame. Yep, there's some, uh, some Disco Era wheels. Yeah, even when they're rough like this, I hate seeing them. I passed one other car on the way in here we're going to go back and take a look at. But I'll come back tomorrow morning with a bunch of tools and uh, start liberating things, weather permitting. It's, we're, we're here between the raindrops now. Let's go look at this other car real quick and then get, get out of here. So about six, seven years ago when I had my last shop, Mid-South Mopars, I had a guy... We used to call him Wild Bill. So Bill used to just hang around the shop. And uh, whenever I would find something like this in the junkyard, I would find, I would send Bill. I'd give him a list. He said, Bill, you know, go to this yard and this row, blah, blah, blah. And there's, there's a 70 car net there. I need, I need the, uh, I need the K-frame. I need the rear axle. I need the heater box. I need whatever I need off of this thing. I need floor sections. And you just wind this guy up and he would go. He was a beast. I don't know how he did it. I honestly don't. So this he was he was good help for a year or so, a year and a half. And then he started like hanging around the shop more and more and more. And when I wasn't around, if I was out, customers would come in and he would like kind of like present himself as the guy who was running the shop and start giving them advice and stuff like that on, on what to do with it. It was crazy. Like the guy kind of like took over. I've come across this several times during my, my life. But yeah, it, it, it's times like this I need somebody like Wild Bill. I was gonna see, where the hell am I gonna find this other car? And I wasn't really paying attention to where it was when I was on my way in. I was looking for the car in it, and this thing just jumped out the corner of my eye. I'll find it. Give me a few minutes. Okay, here it is. I found it. So, yeah, it looks a little roachy, right? That's a, uh, I believe this is a 69. 69 Ranchero Squire. Is it a 69? I don't know. This thing looks solid. Look at this. Look at that, very little rust. There's a grill. Yep, 69 Ranchero. You know, this would have made somebody a really nice hot rod. But just a just a, a driver. Oh, what a shame. This thing just ripped out the dash, the gauge cluster and all. Nice door panels, though. Yeah, this thing was solid. A little denty, but I'm sure that damage happened here. But look how nice, how nice these quarters are. Man, people in other parts of the country just kill for stuff like that. We take it for granted here in Tennessee. A shame that would have made a nice project for somebody. Oh no, look at this thing. Hey, hang on. The turbo coupe? No. Oh. 
It's a 5 liter 87 Seabird. Wow. There you go. Oh, this would have made somebody a really nice street racer before it ended up in here. <laughs> Donated. All right. Well, that's it. I got to get home, get my shopping list together. It's starting to rain here now. And uh, I'll come back tomorrow morning and start liberating parts. Hope you enjoy the tour. I'll see you tomorrow.